Hello, and thank you for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make, well, how I make, using my great grandma's recipe, freezer corn. First off, of course, you need to husk all your corn. And look, I got a freebie on that one, a little one attached to it. So I enlisted the help of some smaller hands than mine, and four of us last night it didn't take too long to do six dozen ears husking them. So now today I get the fun of cutting it off the cob and getting her ready for the freezer. Now each run, I'll do lots of different runs, each run is eight cups of corn, one cup of water, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, one stick of butter, and that's it. May not be as good for you as just the straight corn but let me tell you it'll be one of the most delicious ways you've ever had it and truthfully I make this about every two years put it in the freezer and that lasts two years so we still have some in there from the last time so we're actually ahead of the ball but we'll get this done first thing is it's early I'm still drinking my coffee <sighs> that's good all right, let's put that off to the side and we'll start cutting. I have tried. Um, my grandma had a thing that slipped over and you just push it down to cut. And I actually cut my finger really deep the first year I did this. So for me, nice sharp knife, a plate. I like the plastic because it doesn't slide. And we'll cut them off. We'll get this little guy off there first. So I just hold it like this, and you're going to make a mess, and kind of cut down. Turn a little bit, and then cut it again, until you have all the corn off. Now one of the things you can do with these cobs, because there's still actually some of the corn on it, and some of the goodness on it. You can actually boil these cobs, and I did it two years ago when I made it last, and you actually get a pretty good vegetable stock out of it. I would recommend going ahead and throwing in some other vegetables in with it too, but it getting the most out of what you can. That's about what you get off of one ear. We'll see. I'll try cutting another one on here, and then we'll dump them in the pot. Every once in a while you get some leaves that didn't want to come off. All right. I shouldn't have said get them in the pot. I should have said we need eight cups. I have a four cup measuring cup there, so I put it in that, fill it up twice, and then we're good. Okay, so we just scoop her in. So regardless of what you use to cut your corn off, make sure that you're careful. I think the knife's about the safest way. I've seen people use drills and stuff and anything sharp when you get moving fast like that, it's a matter of time before you hurt yourself. So that two ears was about a little over a cup. Get these up so I don't smash them. And this, Corn actually came from a local place. It's about a half hour away. It's called Little Riley Creek Farm. Um, they offer a CSA. Um, I'll put in the description more what a CSA is and a link to their uh, Facebook page. They are full right now, but if it looks like something you might want to do, maybe message them on Facebook and get on a waiting list. They're great people, and this is all certified organic. 
And right now, um, just so you know, I did get some corn from a place called uh, Wolf's. I really like Wolf's too. Um, they're a family owned business outside of Finley here. Um, Wolf's is, they grow their own. Right now they're charging $6 a dozen. This is certified organic, no sprays, no anything on it, $6 a dozen. So it's about the same. Um, so if you can, it's going to cost you the same, why not get something better? I'm not on the, or not a part of their CSA currently, um, but when they have extra stuff that they're not going to have given to the CSA or that they're going to sell to the public, then Amanda over at Little Riley Creek Farm will give me a call and ask if I'm interested. Um, that's where I got my green beans too, if you saw the last video. Um, certified organic, $2 a pound. Like I said, prices may change depending on when you see this. This is uh, August of 2020, so, but great place. Like I said, Facebook, Little Riley Creek um, Farm, just outside of Bluffton. All right, let's get with the cutting. You see that? The corn isn't sliding on the plate, but the plate's sliding a little. So I have to be careful with that. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Oh, wait, I know how to speed it up. That's right. Another drink of coffee. <laughs> Okay, there's about four cups. So, dump her in the pan. I like to put about half the butter in. And repeat. Wait, this seems slower. Oh, need another drink of coffee, huh? Sometimes you gotta stop, clean up your mess, and refuel the coffee. Okay, there's the other four cups, and I'm throwing some on the floor that I won't pick back up and put in. Just like that, set that off to the side. Okay, now I kind of need something to stir with. Magic. There we go. All right, so now... You want to add your one tablespoon of salt, your one tablespoon of sugar, put it in there. You want to add the rest of your butter. And your, whoop, one cup of water. Give it a good mix. Now I'm going to go put it on the stove top over there and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it hits a boil, we're going to boil it for five minutes, then take it off and we can put it into the packages that we want to put in the freezer. So let me get this boiling. 
Okay, so there we've got our boiling. You see the bubbles popping in that. And we set the timer for five minutes. So as soon as the five minutes is up, we take it off and get her over to start cooling. All right. Now, if you're like me and you've got a lot of corn, you know, like six dozen ears, then you will keep the stove top going and you'll transfer them over to some other dishes, let them cool a little bit, and then get them in some containers. So that's what we're gonna do right now. What was that? I can't quite ear you. Maybe there's something stuck in my ear. Oh, <laughs> what? Too corny? All right. So as you see, I'm just ladling it in. About up on these to that line so that there's some room. Plus, I might go back because you'll there be fluid in the bottom still once you get all these out, and then I kind of disperse that amongst them. Um, I do not recommend doing more than one batch at a time because the stuff can kind of get not mixed as well and it won't taste as good. So stick to the eight cups of corn. May take a little bit longer, but in the long run, it's worth it. and repeat. Sometimes you may get a little bit more or you may get a little bit less. Depends how they cook down, how accurate you were on putting the stuff in. And like, might be able to fill them back up a little bit. Looks like. I can probably fit this into all of them. And see that for the next group. You can get these jar or these uh, containers at like Meyer or Walmart. I like them. They're freezer safe. Um, they stack well in the freezer, and one of those is about enough for my family to eat. If I make two, we'll have leftovers. If I make one, it all gets eaten. So it's easier also to thaw out one at a time or two, but I mean separately because they're not one big bulk. Now I still will put some into some of the double ones, but mainly I stick with these. All right, let me finish doing all the rest and I'll bring you back for the wrap up. Here it is, we're all done. So out of six dozen ears of corn, we got 24 pints of freezer corn. All right, as you can see back there, I've got citrus aid to make. We're gonna end up canning some uh, squash and we've got onions in the back we're gonna dehydrate. And you might see, first from the garden, 
a Wisconsin midget melon. Gonna eat that later today. Alright, thanks for watching my videos again. Hope to see you in the next one.